Hi, my name is Chef Verge and welcome to Apka Chef Online. Today, join me as I teach you how to make an advanced level classical style wedding cake. Let's get started! For the dummy cake, we will need a 6 inch and a 10 inch round styro and a 12 inch cake drum. We will be needing as well a 12 inch PVC pipe. Rolling pins, rulers, piping bags, soft acetate plastic, fondant smoothers, 8 inch ring, 6 inch ring, and a 5.5 inch ring. A cookie cutter set, blade cutters, scissors, paint brushes, pizza cutter, rubber spatula, fondant crimpers, bobby pins. We will be needing as well a kitchen aid with a, a bowl and a paddle attachment. Turntable, plunger cutter, and we will be needing three piping tips. Small round nozzle, tip number 10. Small round nozzle as well, tip number 2. And the smallest one is a small round nozzle, tip number 1. So for the ingredients, we would need to prepare the following ingredients. 333 grams of sugar, 333 grams of all-purpose flour, 367 grams of softened butter, 367 grams of cool eggs, 5 grams of vanilla powder or vanilla extract. We'll need 3 grams of baking powder, 75 grams of milk, and 75 grams of cream. This would be the design for our advanced level classical style wedding cake. It'll be a three-tiered cake with the middle tier being a real cake accompanied by two dummy cakes for the top and the bottom tier. The top tier would be elevated by a cake peeler made from passage. We will finish our cake with the royal icing pipe church as our topper. The technical aspect with regards to this cake is that we would be focusing more onto the string work design and artistry. We would be decorating all our tiers, including the cake peeler, with different styles of string work. One being the Lambet method string work and the other being a drop string work design. For accents for the cake, we will be finishing them with some filigree ornaments and we will be doing some royal icing bead piping. So for the pound cake or butter cake, we will be using a creaming method. For the creaming method, we would have to use softened butter, which goes in first on our mixer. For the creaming method, it's very important, come at least, especially when doing pound cake or butter cakes, that all the ingredients are of the same temperature. So, uh, if working with something that came from the chiller, probably let it sit within an hour outside on room temp to bring down the temperature. Or if you have to use it right away, come at least place it in a microwave for five seconds intervals just to make sure that the temperature uh, goes down so i start here first with the butter which i would be creaming on medium speed after it has become lightened then we will be adding the granulated sugar And we will continue to mix this just until it becomes lightened. In a while, we would try to turn off the mixer and try to scrape just to make sure that all of the butter is properly incorporated throughout the mix and everything is creamed properly. Around this time, once it starts now to become light, pale, and fluffy, now we could start to add the following ingredients. Afterwards, we would be adding the liquids. We would start first with the eggs. So for the eggs, we have to make sure that we add it gradually to make sure that all the ingredients would emulsify with the fat. Especially, the eggs contains liquid, and it's hard to emulsify with fat. So we have to do it this gradually. It's 
So I'm pouring the egg mixture, one egg at a time, and making sure that uh, it mixes first before adding an, a next stage. After adding all the eggs, I turn off the mixer and make sure I scrape it once again, just to make sure everything is incorporated nicely. And at this point, we are now ready to add our next ingredient. So what I have here is the all-purpose flour that I would mix with the baking powder. So this one is already pre-sifted and I would start to add it gradually. So probably I would add it in three additions, but along with that, within those three additions, I would be adding the milk and cream uh, along with the vanilla. We have to make sure that the milk and cream are also on room temperature better if it's there slightly warm so at least uh, they mix nicely and uh, the butter doesn't solidify once again so I start first with the flour I turn it off I add the first addition of flour probably one third first right now I could just mix it on low speed So once it's around 80% incorporated, then I would add one third as well of the milk and cream. And this ensures that all the, uh, all the mixture or all the ingredients would mix nicely. Again, another third of the flour mixture, followed by a third again of the milk mixture. Then I would add the last addition of flours. And the last addition of the milk mixture. So at this point, we will just need to mix it just until everything is homogeneous or until you don't see any more streaks of flour or any streaks of butter. So once everything is properly mixed and homogenized, now we have to turn off the mixture. I tend not to over mix it or else the cake would end up to be a little tough because of the gluten from the flour. So at this stage should be okay. And now we are ready to transfer into the cake pan. So I would now start to transfer it over to our cake ring. I just make sure that I fill it only up until 70% full. So I start first with a little quantity and then just try to level it out first. So probably I could still add a little bit more. So right after this, we are now ready to bake. Our oven should be preheated already at around 160 degrees Celsius. And this would bake around 45 minutes to one hour or until a toothpick or a stick inserted comes out clean. So for now, we are ready to cut the cake, fill it with jam, and to cover it with the fondant. So what I have here is a, rate, uh, is a serrated knife. I would just try to aim to go into the center, and I would gradually, on a serrated motion, or on a sewing motion, gently cut it up until you reach the half.
So it's very important that after rotating it, both your ends should meet onto the center. And now we just have to gently push it inside. Okay. Now we are going to fill it with jam. Any flavor or any sort of store brought jams would work. In this case, I would be using raspberry jam. So I would just put an ample amount onto the center. There are some decorators that would put simple syrup first onto their sponges. It's completely uh, depending on your client and depending on whoever decorates a cake. If they want it to be extra moist, they could put in some simple syrup. But right now, it's okay to put directly our jam. I could still put in a bit more. So this one is just for flavor profile. Make sure not to put too much jam onto the cake or else everything would just squish out afterwards. So just a good flavorful jam. Should be okay. Then I would put the other. So make sure it's leveled as well. And now we would be sealing the whole cake. We would be frosting it with a thin layer of jam. And this would help us to make sure that whenever or after we start to cover it with the fondant, the fondant would stick immediately. So just a very, very thin layer of jam all throughout the surface and to seal the crevices of the cake. It is a little handful tip to put a little wet towel slightly damp wet towel onto the turntable just so that it doesn't move too much then I would put the cake now we are ready to cover again so this is what it should look like after a thin layer of jam frosting so this would help to make sure that the fondant would stick right away here i would be using a cornstarch just to slightly dust the table or the working surface which i made sure is already cleaned and sanitized so using a rolling pin we will just be working with the dough up around five millimeters thickness so we have to make sure to always Move the fondant, make sure it doesn't stick. And only add corn flour, only if necessary. So we have to be cautious as well on the amount of corn flour we are putting onto the fondant because the more that we add, the more is, or the higher the tendency as well that it would dry out easily. So whenever I use a rolling pin, I start from the center and then going upwards and then downwards. I make sure first you somehow visualize if this is your ATM cake, then you should have come at least an allowance of four inches within the within each side to make sure that it would be properly covered. So at this point, you see it's around five millimeter thickness. So if there are little holes or little bumps of air we just have to pinch it with the bobby pin to extract out the air and make sure that the fondant is extra smooth this is a, a very minimal tip but it ensures that the fondant is smooth as we cover the cake so as we start to cover the cake i will just get the cake and place it within my work surface then I would gently lift 
the fondant and place it exactly towards the center. And then, now we start to seal in or stick, make sure it sticks onto the top part and onto the edges first. And as you go along the way, then you start to go downwards. Just gently tapping it or making it stick. So at this point, we would have some creases. So for this creases or this folds, what we just have to do is to gently stretch it and uh, make sure it sticks again. Gently stretch it, then make sure it sticks. So at this point, you should be able to make sure that the fondant is stick to the cake right onto the bottom. Then I would use a pizza cutter and then I would gently run it around the cake to cut the excess fondant. So it's always advisable that you uh, leave an extra for your fondant. So do not uh, scale out the fondant exact. So at least we could still always trim in the end. So right now I would be using this one or fondant smoothers. So I would just be using it to run and move it all along to the sides. Make sure it sticks to the cake and it smoothens as well the whole surface of the cake. So for this real cake, I have to ensure that the fondant is a little bit thick so at least it doesn't slide down or it doesn't expose the jam filling. So, but for the other dummy cakes or the other styro cakes that we would be covering, I would tend to go a little bit uh, thinner because there is no jam that we need to uh, cover neatly for that. Now start to cover our dummy cakes. So our styro cakes are measured. This one is six inch by three and a half inches. This one is 10 inch by uh, 3 inches and we have a cake board that is measured at uh, 12 inches diameter. So I would start first with the smallest one. I have a brush with a little water. So what we would do is that we would just lightly dampen the styro to make sure that it would stick neatly and the fondant won't slip. So just a little brushing. If it's too wet and then what it would do is that the fondant would become very sticky. So just a slight brushing just to make it damp. And the board as well I would do so. Especially the sides. So now they are slightly damp. We are now ready to cover. I start first with the smallest one. For the for the six inch cake, I prepared around 600 to 700 grams of fondant and that should be excessive already. I put a little, a little corn flour as well. This one for the styro cakes, come at least we roll it around four to three, three to four mm, should be okay. So same thing as well have to rotate it once in a while, make sure it doesn't stick. To make sure after achieving around 4 mm thickness, I just smoothen it. So I just run, I'm not even rolling the wooden pin, I'm just running it up to the surface. And what it does is that it smoothens 
the surface. So that should be okay. So the damp styro. So same thing as well. Start from the top part, make sure it sticks. And then you go right to the edges. You just lightly, with the gentle hands, run it around. Make sure that this, the edges stick immediately. And then you slightly go downwards. So the folds, you stretch out again. And then make sure it sticks. So we do it up until we finish or up until we reach the bottom. So all the folds should be stretched. So even without the use of a uh, fondant smoother, you should be able to do this task nicely. So at this point, my fondant reached to the bottom. It's all smooth now. We'll be using again a pizza cutter. A pizza cutter or a cutter blade should work. A paring knife as well. Then I'll just run it around. Making sure I'm not stretching the dough too much. And your cut should be clean. So I use a fondant smoother now. And then any excess dough should come right to the bottom. So after achieving the desired smoothness and evenness all throughout the cake, what I would do is that I get a cutter blade and then I'll just gently run around my cutter blade to take out all those excess dough onto the bottom of the styro. So make sure you do this clean so that you don't cut the styro. And this ensures that there is no more excess fondant. And everything is leveled. So I'll just do one final smoothening for all the sides and we're done. So this should be the cakes after we have finished covering it with a fondant. So here for the cake drum or the cake base, I would just put a, a little decorative finish for it. So this one I have as a crimper. This is uh, usually used for tarts to give a decorative finish onto the edges or to give a fluted edge. So I would be using it as well for our cake. So how it does or how to do it is over the edge or over the corner edge of your cake, what I would just do is I would just get a little portion of the fondant and then I would just crimp. So as I crimp it, that gives the decor for the cake. So now we are ready to make the passage. A passage is sugar candy to which we would be using for our wedding cake. Usually, it has the ability to become solid when it dries out and it would be a good component for us to use for our bases. Here are the ingredients we will be needing. One kilogram of powdered icing sugar, 100 grams of corn flour, two grams of cream of tartar, 20 grams of distilled white vinegar, and we will be needing 12 grams of gelatin to which I dissolve in 100 grams of water to allow it to bloom. 
I'll start by sifting first our dry ingredients. So in the drum, drum strainer, I would be adding the powdered sugar, corn flour, and the cream of tartar. It is very important to sift the powdered sugar especially because it tends to have a lot of plumps and we want our passage to be smooth. So we would now pour the sifted flours onto our mixture. I tend to put everything in the mixture now. We have our bloom gelatin to which I microwave until liquid and very hot. So we would just put this on low speed and we would gradually add in our melted gelatin to the mixture. Just until they are partially mixed, I would start to add in as well the vinegar. And we just mix this just until it forms a cohesive dough. So at this point, that everything is mixed, I cannot take it out. And I put it on my working surface. Just to make sure that I mix everything neatly. So after mixing, our passage dough should look like this. It is very important afterwards that we cover it in plastic wrap to make sure it doesn't dry out and harden. So we would only get the pieces that we would need from here. So for the first part of our passage, we would be rolling it until 2 millimeter thickness and we would be making some base from it. So I always dust it with corn flour just to make sure it doesn't stick and I will always move the passage. So after achieving the desired thickness, we are now ready to cut it with our ring molds. So here I have the 8 inch. So I just cut it neatly and I would transfer it to a board. For me, I prefer using a wooden board because it is porous so it absorbs the excess moisture from the passage and it dries out quicker. But I make sure I line it with parchment paper. So now I transfer this one. Right here. So I'll do the rest as well with the 6 inch and the 5.5 rings.
From here as well, we would be cutting a 10 cm by 12.5 cm rectangular piece. And that would be our base for our church that we would be making later. Here we have the passy edge dough to which I rolled into 1 inch thickness. We would be using a 2.5 inches diameter cookie cutter and I would cut two pieces from this dough. The other piece of this round passy edge that we have cut, I would have a cookie cutter that is designated to have the same diameter as to the pillar and this we would cut on the center. So this would serve as our lock for the PVC pipe to assure that it is straight and it would be sturdy for our cakes. And this remaining two pieces, we would be using as our base for the church on the top tier. We are now ready to make our royal icing. For the royal icing, we will be needing three ingredients. 500 grams of sifted powdered sugar, 80 grams of room temperature egg whites, and 4 grams of distilled white vinegar. So we'll start to pour in all our sugars into the mixer. Low speed. I start to gradually add in the egg whites. So I tend to go on low speed to avoid too much of the sugar cluttering outside of the bowl. After a few seconds, we may now add the vinegar. I'll just add everything. Once there is no more bits of sugar, now we could increase the speed to medium. And we start to whip it up until it reaches stiff consistency. So this process would take around three to four minutes. After a few minutes, our royal icing should look like this. So when I take it out, it's nice and stiff with a very smooth consistency. So this should be good enough to hold the structure for our string works later. So if we are not working with the royal icing right away, it is very important that we keep it covered with a damp towel. So in this case, we would be able to protect the exterior layer of the royal icing to prevent it from forming a skin that would dry out. So now I have the piping bag which I fit with the piping nozzle number one, the smallest piping tip. 
So now I'm now ready to get a few realizing. So I'll just get a handful of it. It's very important, especially for string works, to never fill your piping bag too much. Because if there is too much, then there is more tension for your wrist, which would be very hard when it starts to pipe. So I'll cut it, the nozzle. And we are now ready to pipe. If, for example, that we won't be using the piping nozzle, it's very important as well that we keep this covered. To keep this covered, I'll get a bobby pin and I would just clog the tip of the piping nozzle so at least it's not exposed in the air that would dry out the royal icing as well. And I keep it onto a container with a little damp water just to make sure that it doesn't dry out as well. So in a while, we're ready for piping. After making the real icing, now we are ready to start with the piping. So we would start first by doing the filigree ornaments. So what I have in here are soft acetate plastic, the ones that are used as well for laminating. So we would use this as our canvas. The stencils are now lined onto our acrylic board. So what I have here is that I'll just place the laminating plastic on top and I will start to pipe. So I'll just secure the plastic as well with the a little tape just to make sure it doesn't move around once I start piping. So for this crisscross design, I'll start first by finishing all the vertical lines. So I start from the first point and pipe straight and finish on the end point. So still from end point to the other end point. So after finishing the crisscross lines, now we are ready to finish the filigree by placing the border. So for this one, we have to follow the shape. So I just lightly guide the piping nozzle to where it should land. And the tension or the amount of pressure that I put on my hands should be constant all throughout. So for this filigree ornament, we have to do 12 pieces of this one to surround the top tier of our cake. So for the other filigree ornament, we would be doing a fleur de lis. So this would surround all the finishing touches for our string works. So we would need to make a lot of this style. So I'll start first from the center. Then I pipe. And then I go to the sides and finish the other. And I go to the other end as well. So the five pieces of this fleur de lis completes one set. For this entire cake, we would need to make 20 sets of this one. We will now start to make the topper for our cake, which would be a pipe royal icing church. I made sure to stick the paper onto the acrylic board just so it wouldn't slip. And on top of that, I placed the plastic sheet and now we're ready to begin. For the design of the church, it's almost the same pattern which is a crisscross. I will start to pipe on the front part of the church first, which is here. So what I would do first is that I would outline the border. 
and for in this case there is a window Now we start the pipe with the vertical lines first. All the vertical lines are finished. Let's start with one side first. After finishing the whole stencil, it should look like that. And then we would be doing the same thing again for the back of the church but for that I would tend to unfollow the window and the door and try to close everything so the back door doesn't have any open air next thing we will do are the side panels for the church which are two pieces so for this case I'll go and start with the outline first Then we would do the windows. Now we start with the diagonal lines. We will now start doing the roof for the church. For this one, we will have to do two pieces of this. So same thing as to how we did the other ones. We'll start with 
forming the border first or outlining and this serves as a border for us to know where to start piping and where to end it so it should not be beyond the border that we made so again I start with the vertical lines and then do as follow Now we would start to make the pieces for our bell tower which would include these three pieces. The first shape, we have to do two pieces of this and this would serve as a lock for, from this hoop to uh, close the bell tower. This one, the triangular shape would be the topmost part of the church or the tower. So for this one, we have to make four pieces of this one. And this one would be uh, the deck of the bell tower. For this one, we have to make three pieces of this. So I start with the first shape. So again, I outline first. We are now ready on the next process of our passage pieces wherein we would stick them together using royal icing. But before that, I take an extra step of polishing them using a sandpaper. This would ensure that the passage pieces are perfectly dry and perfectly smooth and if there are any edges, we would be able to straighten and smoothen it out. Once our passage pieces are already smoothened and polished, we are now ready to stick them. Using royal icing, we would now assemble the pieces. So for the first piece would be for the pillar, which would call for the two pieces of the 5.5 inches and one piece of the 6 inch ring. So I'll just put, so I'll just put the first 6 inch piece on the bottom first. I place a little amount of fire icing, not too much, and then another piece of the smaller 5.5 inch circle. So I just gently press it down so that all the royal icing could squish up evenly all throughout the surface. Upon drying, this should be firm already. There you go. The next piece would be the lock that we would put the tube inside. So for the lock, I just put a little royal icing as well, just upon the surface, and then place it neatly on the center. Upon pressing, there should be a little royal icing coming out from the sides. Please be able to clean it before drying out.
The next piece would be the PVC pad that we covered with the passy edge. This would serve as the pillar for our cake. So I would just put a generous amount of royal icing upon the sides and onto the bottom as well. This is very important to place a good amount of royal icing because this would hold the structure for your pillar. So you want it to become uh, strong as well. So what we want is the pillar to become strong as well. So I'll just pipe in if it needs more royal icing. Pipe it through. And then just clean neatly all the excess royal icing that comes out. So this would be the base for our top tier. So there is extra support. And this is very important to be placed properly to make sure that it is well balanced because this would hold the top tier for our cake. So we have as well these two pieces of the passy edge which would serve as the elevation for the topper of our top tier. So what I'll just do is I'll just put a little royal icing. Make sure I put it leveled on the center and just clean the excess. So we are left with our 8 inch passy edge disc. So this would serve as our base for the top tier. So what I'll just do is I'll take out my top tier cake So I'll just still put a good amount of royal icing all throughout This is very important to place it neat on the center And afterwards, you are left with the seam connection from uh, the passy edge and to the fondant. What we'll just do is take an extra step of filling the gap with an extra royal icing. So it would be seamless. After piping the royal icing, we have to ensure as well that it is seamless and the connection is done pretty good. So I'll just clean up the excess royal icing that comes out to the side. So along with the assembling, we are now ready to combine both our cake drum and our bottom tier. So I'll just go ahead and do the same thing by putting a good amount of royal icing onto the center. I would neatly place, make sure that it is on the center and press it just to squish out any excess royal icing. We would put some royal icing as well to close the seam. And we would smoothen it out with a straight spatula just to make it seamless. Now that we had succeeded piping all the pieces for our church, now we are ready to assemble them. So with utmost carefulness and light hands, we slowly take out the pieces of the church starting from the sides and to the front and the back side. So I just slowly lift up with the lightest hands and then carefully place it on their side onto one place or one side of the board. I'll go ahead and do as well the top part.
So now we have formed the sides of our churches. I'll just carefully line them to the center from edge to edge. So at least I am assured that when I start building them up, they are upright and they are positioned on the center. So I'll start first, first with the back side of the church. I'll place a thin layer of red icing, straight line, upon the sides and carefully lip up. And I'll place some royal icing onto the side. I'll go ahead as well and place some royal icing onto the one side of the church. And now we are ready to carefully lip up and place them. And using that royal icing we had on the side, we stick them both. Make sure upright and it sticks to the royal icing that we form on the bottom. So we have formed the first two sides of the church. Now we'll just continue doing on the same for the other. So in this case, since I have an opening for the door, I'll place some royal icing from the bottom just to make sure it's clean. And then as well, I put one on the sides. Before letting go of the pieces, just make sure that they are standing upright and make sure that they are st stick together so at least they don't fall out. And the last side. So after lining the sides and forming the foundation for our church, we should give it some time to allow the royal icing to set. Come at least we give it a good 15 to 30 minutes time to allow it to set before we add the next part of our church, which would be the roof. So after being successful in placing the roof of the church, now we are ready to work on the bell tower. For this one, you would need two pieces of the V shape, which would serve as the lock on top of the roof, and the three pieces to serve as the window onto the bell tower. So what I'll do is I'll place some red icing as well on both sides. This would be almost similar to the manner of how we build the foundation of the church. So I'll place one piece. So after allowing it time to harden, we are now ready to assemble the bell tower on top of our roof. So I'll just put some realizing onto the 
V-shaped side of the churches. And I will be placing it on the uh, front, partial front of the church. And make sure it's locked in its place. And make sure it's upright as well. We would now assemble the top part of our bell tower. So I'll just pipe again. And to finish, I'll just put a small star pipe royal icing. And this would be the finishing accent as well for the church. Final step is to put it on our elevation. So I'll just put again a good amount of royal icing onto the center carefully lip up and place it upright and centered and that's our pipe royal icing church topper so after having all the cakes neatly covered up and assembled to their respective places now we are almost ready to start our royal icing string works. For this 8 cm high cake, I have prepared a 5 cm thickness, which is I just cut out from a piece of paper. So from there, what I would do is, if it moves, I'll just use a bobby pin and uh, gently poke it through just so that it doesn't move as I pour my border. This technique I would do as well for both the middle tier and the top tier. After finishing all the borders for all our tiers, now we are going back on our bottom tier. So what I have prepared here is a wave pattern which is around 2 centimeters high. So this would be the second border or the second guide for our bottom tier. What I'll just do is that I'll pin as well. Same thing. And using a cutter, we gently scratch it. I do such a step to make sure that when I start piping the string works, I have the curved edges all uniform and consistent. So we would start with the curved lines. So we go from one point, gently let it stick into the cake, but don't do such that it would start to pull. That's one. And then continue. So what I have here is a decorative accent. This one is a small flower made from fondant. The bud is a pipe royal icing colored with pink. What I would be using this for is that I would put a little royal icing onto the center of the flower and would put it directly onto the center of the cake. Not too high but only on the center and has a little spacing. So I would repeat doing this step onto all the curved pieces of the cake. So for the top tier would involve a different style of piping the string works. A while ago with the bottom tier what we did is the curved edges or the curved border has been placed on the side of the cake 
In this case, for the top tier, what I did is that I cut a very small half circle piece and this would be my guide to make sure that all the pieces of the curved edges would be uniform on this top tier because I would line it not from the side but rather from the bottom of the passage piece. So I place one piece of the border and using a cutter I just lightly or faintly make a mark to which only I could see it. So I would continue finishing this from this end going to the next end until I finish all around the top tier. So we start from the very edge of the cake. After finishing the first layer, we go back again to the first one we have done and go tight directly on top of it. Make sure it's leveled nicely. So now that we have finished forming the border for our bottom tier, it's now time to go with the string works proper. Using this small piping tip nozzle, now we would start pipe. In this case, we have our guide, the 5 centimeter guide we have before. So now the goal is to go from one point, which is the border, up to the second point, which is the curb border as well. So we would start piping. So from the very most tip up to the end. That makes one string. You go to the other end as well. And now I go to the center. And afterwards, I go in between them until I finish again the whole tier. I do, I do not have that habit of placing complete strings all throughout the cake because what tends to happen is, especially if the royal icing is still wet, it would tend to stick against one another. So dry out first before finishing again in between them. So after finishing the whole round of the tier, now we go back with the, our first string. In this case, I would place in two strings in between them, in between each spaces. So now we would be dealing with the top tier string works. For this one, the style or the technique would be almost similar to the bottom tier. We go from one point. I start again on the very edge of one curve. Carefully let that drip. And go again onto the other end. So after finishing the whole round of the top tier, now we would go in between them and fill in the spaces. This one we have to be careful as well because it would be twice as hard to pick up the string if it falls in between the gap of the strings. So you want to be very cautious and uh, precise when we start piping.
So we'll just repeatedly complete it, and uh, that would be our top tier. So for the middle tier, this would involve a different piping method, unlike the top tier and bottom tier to which the strings are piped directly upon the cake for the middle tier, unlike the top and bottom tier to which the strings are piped directly upon the cake, for this style, the strings are hanging around the cake. Place the bobby pins from the very end of the style, making sure that they are all uniform in height and in distance. After uniformly placing the bobby pins onto the entire cake, I have taken the liberty of placing my middle tier right within the center. At this point, it is very important that you take note of all the sides and making sure that they are uniform in distance. So, starting from the light border that we have done a while ago, I would pipe from that point. Pipe carefully and slowly up until to the head of the bobby pin and we stop. Continue with the next one. And just continuously do it around the cake. Afterwards, we give it around 10 minutes to 15 minutes to be able to dry out before carefully removing the bobby pins. So after a good 10 to 15 minutes of drying, we should now be able to take out the bobby pin away from the strings. To do this, we would have to be very careful and just slightly move the bobby pin sideways. At this point, see if it's properly oiled, we should be able to properly take out. After successfully removing the bobby pins away from the strings, now we are ready to connect both strings with a curve. So I'll start from this point, carefully place royal icing and let it drip, but not too low, and then connect it with the other piece. We'll continue from this end now, pipe carefully. Make sh making sure that the curve would be uniform in all sides and will finish the whole circumference of the cake. So after having the curve dry out completely, I would start to strengthen and place in the royal icing now on the center. Now that we have finished piping the strings on our middle tier, we are now ready to do some finishing work. I have some royal icing of the same color that I put in a bag to which I cut a little slit to make some beads. If you want, you could use a small round nozzle, but it is not completely necessary. What I'll just do is that I'll pipe within the connection some very small beads. This step is not completely necessary, but we will do this for all our tiers. So after we have finished piping the beadwork for all our tiers, we are now ready to put some accents into the cake using the white flower patterns that we have done with white royal icing. I'll just put a little dab of white royal icing and then place it smooth side up. For our cake peeler that has been assembled and left to dry, we would showcase a different and slightly difficult style of piping to which the string works are pipe hanging around the pole. In this case first, we would have to prepare our guide or our marking to know where we would start to pipe our string works. What I have here is a piece of paper that measures the whole circumference of the pole. So each layer of the pole would have six sides or six curves later. Afterwards, I would be using the second marking and doing the same thing again. For this poll, what we would like to achieve is to have three layers. So the next question now is to how we would pipe the string works. In this case, what I have here are spare styrofoam. You could use anything that is up for your convenience and preference. But in this case, this would be a best suitable medium to be able to place my bobby pins that would 
give the distance to wherein I would pipe from the pole up to the bobby pin. Same as the principle of the middle tier. So same thing as to what we have done with the middle tier, we would have to prepare our bobby pins as well so that they would be able to not stick with the royal icing and we would be able to take it out nicely. So I'm just placing again a dab of oil onto the heads of the bobby pin. In this case now we are ready to pipe. Remember the border or the marking that we have done. So you'll just pipe from that point, pipe carefully and let it drip up until you reach the bobby pin. So after doing so, we would have to give it a good 10-15 to 15 minutes as well to let the strings dry out before we would be able to take it out. So after 15 minutes given time for it to allow, we should be able to carefully remove it. So I'll just press down the styro board and it should release the bobby pins away from the strings and here we go. Now we could start piping the curves that would connect each string together. I'll start from this point carefully. Don't make the curve too low or else it would be difficult for you to pipe because the strings as well would become long. In my case, I tend to always finish the top layer first before following the next layers. Why? Because if there is so happen that there would be a problem with the strings and it breaks or it collapses, it won't affect the other succeeding layers. So I tend to finish this first so at least I don't have to touch it anymore. And until I finish, then it's much easier for me and much safer. We are now ready to place our filigree ornaments to finish our top tier. So what I have done is that I have taken it out from the laminating plastic. This time you have to be very careful because it's very, very fragile. So I'll just put a little amount of white royal icing just to be able to secure it. I will start by placing four pieces first. One on the north, south, east, and west. So at least I would be able to divide the placement properly. So when I place it, after properly placing four pieces onto the circumference of the cake, now we will put two more filigree ornaments in between those spaces. Now that we had finished creating the components for our cake, the only thing left for us to do is to assemble. So we start with the bottom tier and we'll stick in the middle tier onto it. So I'll just pipe a good amount of royal icing just until it's stable for it to stick. And this one being that it's a middle tier and I cannot hold it because it's prone to damaging if I hold it from the bottom. So what I have to do is to puncture it exactly in the middle with a knife, paring knife. So at least there is something to assist me on lifting it. And I don't carry much of the weight on the bottom. And I gently place it onto the center. Being careful, not to touch too much. Carefully placed and then centered and then I just lightly twist it just to squish out any excess royal icing that are left on the center and it lays flat. That's our middle tier. 
Now that we had assembled both our gears, what I want to do is to make the connection seamless. For that, I would do some beadwork just to close any of the opening or gaps in between them. At this time, I would do the step very, very carefully because there is already some string works that I might ruin. We are now ready to place our pillar. So same thing as well. I place a good amount of rail icing only on the center and we have our pillar making sure it's centered as well gently twist to squish out any of the rail icing take the extra time of making sure that it is leveled and it is uh, on the proper distance. We will now place our top tier. Same thing as well. Royal Isaac. Then our plate. Gently pop it off, making sure it's leveled and centered. This time, when we do the twisting to squeeze out any excess of the royal icing, we have to make sure we do it lightly because the passage has a high tendency of breaking. And of course, our final finishing is the topper. And here, everyone, is our advanced level classical style wedding cake for Apka Chef Online. My name is Chef Verge, and thank you for joining me on creating this. Have a good day!